A navigation bar is one of the most important elements on your website. And since most people use their smartphones to navigate the web, you as a web developer should be able to make it responsive. And that is exactly what I'm going to show you in this video. This is coding to go and in this video we're going to create a simple but beautiful responsive navigation bar using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. This feature will greatly improve your website's user experience and it doesn't matter whether you're a beginner just starting out or an experienced web developer. This tutorial is designed to help everyone create the navbar they always wanted. So let's start by looking at our end product to make plans about what we have to implement. The navbar should behave differently depending on the size of the device that the website is being displayed on. This is what we call responsive. In the mobile view, most of the links should be hidden and only accessible by clicking on a menu button. It will expand this awesome looking sidebar where you can display anything you want. Since the navbar and the sidebar are two separate elements, you are completely free to customize it to your needs. That means you can still include search bars, icons, dropdowns, whatever you want. If that sounds good to you, let's start coding. As always, we begin by creating our index.html file with the basic HTML structure. I also open the website in the browser using the live server extension. To create the navbar, we use the following HTML code. We start with a nav containing an unordered list. Here our navigation links are listed as li elements. Let's copy this several times and enter some sample content like blog, products, about, forum and login. I will use a placeholder for the href attribute. You would have to enter a URL to the different HTML pages that you want to link to. In the browser, it should look like that. A simple unordered list where every link is listed as a bullet point. Now let's take care of our CSS design. First, we need to create a new file called style.css. Make sure to link this file in the HTML head. Perfect. Now let's begin with some basic styles. We want to remove any default margin and padding that the browser applies, giving us a clean starting point. Additionally, we will set the body min height to 100 viewport height, ensuring that our content occupies the entire screen. This is something I recommend you to do every time you start a new web project. Now I want our website to have a visually appealing background image. You can choose any image you like, but for this demonstration, I've already prepared an image called laptop.jpg. If you want to use the same image, check the link in the video description to download it for free. All right, once you have your image ready, we can use the CSS property background image to assign the URL of the image file. In my case, I will use laptop.jpg. You make sure to replace it with the name of your image file. If we look at the website in the browser, the image should appear as the background. However, we might need to make some adjustments to ensure it displays properly. Background size cover. Background repeat, no repeat. And background position center. This way we ensure that the image covers the entire container, we prevent any image repetition and position the image at the center of the screen. Moving on, let's define the font family. I've chosen Sugoi UI, but feel free to select any different font that suits you the best. Now that we've laid the groundwork with our basic preparations, let's start styling the navigation bar. I set the background color to white, and apply a box shadow effect to give it some depth. Next, we need to define some styles for the UL. We set the width to 100% to make it span the full width of its container, and we use Flexbox properties to align the list items to the right and center them vertically. If you don't know how Flexbox works, that is no problem because you can check out the video in the info card. Moving on to the list items, nav li. Each list item represents a navigation link. So we define its height to be 50 pixels, giving us a suitable height for the links. You also may have noticed that we never actually declared a height for the navbar or the ul, because we want the list items to define the height of their parents. Now let's style the anchor tags, a. We set their height to 100% to make them match the height of the list items. And we add a padding to create some space around the text. We should use display flex 
and align items center to center the link content vertically. The text decoration is set to none to remove the default underline. And we specify the color as black. Additionally, we add a hover effect to the anchor text to change the background color to a light gray, creating a visual feedback. Now the last thing to do before we make this website responsive is to align the first list item, which is the coding to go logo, on the left side. Everything else should stay at the right side. To do that, we only have to use the first child selector on our nav li and apply a margin right of auto. All right, if you managed to get to this point, great job. Now it's time to create our sidebar. For this, we need to go back to our HTML file. Our sidebar will basically be the same thing that we did already with the main difference that instead of displaying everything horizontally, we want our list items to be displayed vertically from top to bottom. So let's copy the unordered list and paste it above. This URL will get the class sidebar. In the browser, you should see your navigation bar two times. So let's go back to our CSS file and style the sidebar. This sidebar should always be stacked to the right side covering everything else. We don't want it to influence other website elements. So the only logical way of doing that would be to declare position fixed, top zero, right zero, height 100 viewport height, meaning the full height of the screen, and width 250 pixels. To make sure that the sidebar will always be above everything else, we set the Z index to 999. The background color is white, And let's add a box shadow as well. Perfect. Now we want to display the links from top to bottom. We use Flexbox for that. Display Flex and Flex Direction column. Let's uncenter the links by declaring align items flex start and justify content flex start. To avoid confusion, we should ensure that the list items and links do fill out the entire width of the sidebar. So let's select the sidebar li and declare width 100%. And just to be safe, we can do the same for the sidebar a. Now one final thing for the design is to create this glass effect. To do that, we go back to the sidebar where we apply the background color and use the backdrop filter property. This property determines how the elements behind the current element should be rendered by the browser. On this property, we can call a function called blur and assign a value 10 pixels. This will blur the background. But since we have a white background, we can see the blur effect. So let's make this more transparent to see the magic work. To control how much the glass should be blurred, we can adjust the value in the parentheses. Perfect. Now that the basic design is ready, let's take care of our menu buttons. We want to open this sidebar with this menu icon, and we want to close it again using this X icon. You can get these items very easily and completely for free if you go to fonts.google.com slash icons. Down here, you will find both of these icons. Just select them and download the SVG file. Once you've downloaded the files, drag and drop them into your project folder so that we can use them. In VS Code, we can see the HTML code that is needed to render these icons. So select the menu icon and copy the entire SVG element. At the end of our normal navbar, not the sidebar, we create a new list item and a link, just like we did before with all the other links. Now, as the content of this link, you paste the SVG element. Now, this menu icon should be displayed on the website. But we can't quite see it yet, because the sidebar is covering it. So let's go to the CSS code of the sidebar and change the display property from flex to none. Now the sidebar should disappear, revealing the menu icon. It is quite big, so let's adjust the height and width properties of this SVG. I recommend a value of 26. 
And by the way, if you want your icon to be a different color, you can use the fill attribute to apply any color you want. You can also address the SVG and CSS and use the fill property here. Okay, now it's time to introduce JavaScript. Using JavaScript, we want this icon to open the sidebar. To do that, let's give this list item a onClick attribute. When this list item is clicked, we want to call the function showSidebar. Just make sure that you write it exactly like I did without any quotation marks. Now we create a script tag at the very bottom of our HTML body. In here, we define the function showSidebar. Again, make sure to write it exactly the same way. Inside of this function, we want to get the sidebar element and store it in a const variable. So we write const sidebar equals document.querySelector.sidebar. Inside this query selector, we can select elements exactly like we do in CSS. To display our sidebar, we only need to change its display property to flex again. Remember, when we set the display property to none, it disappeared. When we set it back to flex, it will be there again. So this is the only thing that we need to change in JavaScript in order to hide and show the sidebar. So let's do that by writing sidebar.style.display equals flex. And that's it for this menu icon. Once we click on this menu icon, the sidebar appears. Perfect. Now let's do the same thing to close the sidebar again. The first thing we need to include is the X icon. Let's copy the SVG element and paste it inside the first link of the sidebar, because we don't need the logo in the sidebar since this will be displayed in the navbar already. Once you do that, the X icon should appear in the sidebar. Again, it is pretty big, so let's change its height and width to 26 again. All right, now let's define a onClick function on that list item. This time we call it hide sidebar. In our JavaScript code, we define the function hide sidebar. We can actually copy these two lines of code from here and change the display property to none. We can open and close the sidebar using these two icons. Now that we made the sidebar functionality work, we need to make our CSS code responsive. These links should be hidden on mobile devices. That's why we created the sidebar in the first place. At the bottom of our CSS code, we create a media query. The condition for this query is a max width of 800 pixels. What does this mean? When we inspect the website in the browser and use the device toolbar, we can see how our website would look on different screen sizes. This number up here tells us the width of the screen. I want these links to not be visible on devices that are thinner than 800 pixels. For you, this value may be different because it depends on how many links you have in your navbar. This media query will be triggered once this condition is met. In here, I define the class height on mobile. This class will set the display property to none. Now, every element that has this class will not be visible on devices that are smaller than 800 pixels. So every link that I want to hide will receive this class. I want to hide all of the links in the navbar except the coding to go logo. So I give all of them the class hide on mobile. As you can see in the browser, these links will not be visible when the width is smaller than 800 pixels, but the coding to go logo will still be there. If I apply hide on mobile to that logo as well, it will be hidden too. My links are only accessible by the menu icon. This sidebar works fine for tablets. On smartphone screens, I want it to be full-sized, taking the entire width. For that, I create another media query. This time for the max width of 400 pixels. Here, the sidebar will get a width of 100%. In the browser, that should do what I wanted. Now we need to hide the menu icon on bigger screens. Now that all of these links are visible, there's no need for the sidebar. So let's go to the HTML code and give this list item a class menu button. In CSS, select the menu button and hide it by declaring display none. In the first media query, we assign display block.
This way the menu button will be gone and only visible on smaller screens. And that's it, we have a fully responsive navbar. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. This was Coding2Go and I will see you in the next one.